Ah, sorry, it was not clear to me which stage to share my video to. <laughs> I was trying to share it in the on the stage, not here. Okay, uh, thanks, Chris. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave you on the stage. And uh, oh, we lost Chris. Maybe he'll be right back. Chris is okay. going to... Okay. Sorry, um, I've used Hopin not this way before. <laughs> So, so the setup confused me and I wasn't really sure where I was supposed to be sharing things. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'll get started. Um, all right. Okay. Hey, I am Chris Ward. Sorry about the start there. Uh, I was in the wrong in the wrong room, it appears which I'm sure could actually happen at a physical conference as well. Um, Mark, if you could turn your video off, is that possible? Or take yourself out of the, 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 yeah, okay. Um, so a lot of this year I've been working on a live stream for developer experience, um, mostly looking at things more holistically around the whole package of a live stream, actually, not specifically around APIs. And I've started seeing a lot of the same shortcomings over and over again. I spend like 45 minutes trying to get to know a product and seeing how far I can get with no sort of information on it. Uh, and then recently, a company I do some work for that actually monetizes APIs said, would you be interested in looking at some of the same aspects of what's specific to APIs? Um, and I wanted to, to look at some of the things that could be improved to really add that final polish to an API to make it a good experience for end uh, developers. Um, about so I'm going to show share with you very quickly what I wanted to cover <laughs> all these things <laughs> and then I realized very very quickly that I could probably make an entire talk out of each of these and so I'm not going to end up covering all of these I think I'm going to struggle to fit in the ones I did want to cover today now and um, I'm going to do a few of them and I think there's way more here so these are all the sorts of aspects that you can polish to on an API to make it a better experience for an end uh, developer or end consumer. Some of which they will see, some of which they won't. Things like monitoring, for example, they will never see themselves, but uh, it helps you understand. Um, and I'm not going to do slides. I am going to attempt to do lots of live demos, which so far we'll see how that goes. Uh, and also because it's 2020, and I think just someone talking over slides is 2019, let's do some things a little bit different. So let's see how we go. I'm not the world's biggest API expert, but I do love learning about tools and figuring out how to get them to work into tool chains and things like that. I'm going to mostly be looking at um, the open API spec, um, AKA Swagger, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there are tools that suit a lot of the aspects I will cover for other spec formats as well. And I'll mostly cover REST slash HTTP APIs. But again, there are solutions specific to API Blueprint, RAML, GraphQL, async APIs, et cetera, et cetera. And you've already seen a little bit of a preview of it, but I'm going to use um, an open API spec for M3, the open source project that underpins uh, Chronosphere, which is uh, the company I currently work for. There are lots of errors with this spec, but that is actually intentional. So I'm gonna begin with design and generation. Uh, how you handle this is, it somewhat depends whether you want to start application first or API spec first. 
and how you how you generate your API, I suppose. And um, if you start API first, there's a lot of tools out there to help with this process. Uh, in fact, a dizzying amount of them, and probably more I've never heard of. Um, and a lot of them tend to be commercial. I, I, they're, I'm going to highlight a few commercial tools, but I kind of wanted to focus on open source as much as is possible, but not all of them uh, are going to be open source. I will say that. So I'm just going to pull up some examples of what I want to show. So the first one that would be remiss not to mention um, would be the Swagger editor itself. This lets you play around with your spec and get feedback on problems as you go um, and also get a kind of visual preview of how that may sort of look to people as they under understand and learn the, the spec um, at a later stage. And we'll kind of come back to that stage a little bit later. It's not really a design tool. It does do some auto completion and things like that. But it doesn't necessarily, you kind of have to still know what you're doing. Um, and you can also generate some stubs from up here for the server to, to serve the API and the client to consume it as well. But I've always been a little skeptical of some of these auto generated code stubs, but it is an option there. Another one that is very popular in this space is, of course, the venerable Postman. Um, and hopefully that's viewable enough. Oh, there we go. Fortunately, if you zoom in on it. Um, it's, there we go. This actually does give you more option to actually do design. I basically imported the spec into here to give us something to look at. So you can play around with parameters, set um, variables, play around with environments and all sorts of things like that to experiment with how something might work before you sort of push it out to a quote unquote real application. Um, Postman is not free. It has some open source components and it can do a lot more than this. A lot of these design tools start to cross over into uh, quote unquote all in one options where you can do more than one of these things. It's hard to know where to put them sometimes. And um, so it is not free. The free tier, there is a free tier that's good for experimenting, but you probably will hit those limits quite quickly, actually. But it is one of the more user-friendly options. Another that is somewhat similar and helps you design is a, a Mac-only application, unfortunately, called Pour. I'm actually uh, quite a big fan of Pour. I use it mostly myself uh, because it's actually Mac native as opposed to a lot of these other tools that are not truly native. But that does mean it's only available on a Mac, of course. Uh, and again, um, one of the limitations why I'm using the Pet Store example here and not the M3 example fully is it does not actually support OpenAPI Spec 3 yet, which is a strange oversight. But um, hopefully that's coming. It does have an extensions architecture. So possibly that is coming at a certain point. Uh, it's just telling me I had an issue with hopping mirroring screens earlier and I thought I had fixed that, but apparently not. Although it seems to be okay as far as I can see. Um, I'm not sure. Doesn't seem to be mirroring as far as I can see. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, so there are some limitations to it. Hey, Chris, it is mirrored uh, to to uh, the audience. So if there's anything you can... Uh, there is something do I can do, but it's not mirroring in the view I see, which is strange, but I can fix it. I think a lot of people are holding up uh, mirrors on their screen and looking at it that way. That's very odd. I'm, it's not mirroring on my view, but I can undo that. Yeah, I can reverse that. Um, so that's probably not mirrored anymore, I'm guessing. 
I don't know. Does anyone want to tell me if that is okay now? It looks back to front to me, but <laughs> I will carry on. Okay. Um, so that's weird. I'm seeing a different view from everybody else. That's strange. Okay. Where was I? So this is poor. It's Mac only, but I do quite like it, but it does have some limitations, but um, it's a very nice option for for uh, prototyping and experimenting if that suits you. And there are some collaboration options if you so wish. Finally, uh, this is one that starts to cross over into the, the commercial world. Kong, who have a whole suite of API tools, recently, I would say acquired because it's actually open source, an open source um, tool. They recently caught a, sort of bought under their wing um, the two Insomnia tools, which are, again, cross-platform tools. One here, the designer, which is, I suppose, a little bit like Swagger Editor here in the background, and one which is called, I always forget, just Insomnia, um, that lets you do the, the testing, the, the, uh, the actual kind of prototyping and getting results side of things. And then as they slowly integrate it into the rest of their offering, you can actually then take it straight from the prototype into their whole kind of API tool chain. But if for whatever reason, you do not like uh, uh, Postman or something like that, then this is a good cross-platform option and you can ignore a lot of the <laughs> other side of things should you want to. Um, and, Another example here, which I'm just going to have to switch. It only works in Chrome browsers, so I have to just change browser, is Stoplight. Uh, Stoplight is another one of these all-in-one tools that has a lot of, of options here, um, but it also does have a kind of design option where you can experiment with things here, but then go a lot further and um, test and uh, also get a whole bunch of other feedback, which I'll come to a little bit later. But obviously, it's probably overkill if all you want to do is, is design in the first place. And then another perspective for designing an API is actually uh, doing it from the code side. And there's sort of different ways to do this in your programming language of choice, but then there's this nice sort of generic one that I came across called API doc, which lets you add annotations at the beginning of most, which is a strange selection of programming languages, but most programming languages. And then you can actually use that to kind of design and generate um, a spec later as well. So it's another slightly different perspective of looking at things. Now, one of my favorite topics, topics is actually uh, linting and checking how, how your spec meets a standard. Um, okay, I want to, so here's the first one I wanted to look at. Um, I actually wanted to look at spectral first. That's, something's gone back to front there. Ah, where is spectral gone? This is, Problem with doing live demos. I don't know where it's gone. Okay, I will. Oh, it's right here. That's why I thought I was still looking at Spotlight. Okay, it's uh, put out by Stoplight, but um, it is an open source tool. Uh, it lets you. Well, I'll show you an example actually. So I've got some my spec here. I'm going to switch into terminal, and like many. Um, command line tools, there's a lot of options here, but if we just stick to the default for now. And you can see we pretty much get, a bit larger, we pretty much get a list of errors and warnings. That's basically it. And we can see the problems we have and where to find them. Um, it's quite a well-known option. It can also check the YAML and JSON versions of a spec. And despite some constant kind of reminders to also use Spotlight Studio, but that's, you know, that's how companies make money out of open source, that's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's, um, it's quite a nice, clear option. It also has some good uh, tooling integration. So I've got Visual Studio Code over here. Um, any of you may have noticed down the bottom here, I'm seeing some of the exactly the same errors. This is using the same extension, the same underlying command in the um, in the editor to give me the same messages. And also, if I was to go down where those messages are, I would see squiggly lines. There we go. Uh, another one is Open API Lint. This is primarily a VS Code extension, um, but it's actually built on a bunch of things from a, a, a whole toolkit created by this same company, Mermaid. Um, so you can actually kind of pull apart dependencies and build your own tool chain out of that if you wish. I won't demo that just because um, it's actually hard to switch between the two, especially right now. Um, Specky is another option from WeWork. I'm not going to show a demo now because I'm running short on time and I want to show you some other things. I actually wanted to show the IBM one. So IBM's Open API Validator because it does something slightly different but is more common in the general um, minting world. Is that the right one? Too many things with very similar commands. <laughs> Sometimes I forget which one's which. This is the right one, good. So it gives the warnings and errors in pretty much the same way. But the interesting thing I want to point out here is what we saw right at the top. <laughs> There's way too many warnings and errors here. Right at the top. Oh dear, here we go. Fun, fun, fun. Scroll, 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 scroll. Here. A validate RC file. And RC files are a somewhat standard way to configure uh, linters um, and enable or disable rules that you do and don't want to use. So if you want a bit more control in a kind of more standard way and then share that configuration around your team, that is actually uh, an interesting option too. Um, with regards to documentation, because I am unfortunately short on time due to some technical issues, I'm not going to reel through a lot of uh, documentation options, but I'm actually going to talk about uh, linting the documentation instead. This is a subject that I am uh, extremely hey, passionate about. Chris, I'm really sorry, but uh, with the technical difficulties, we've run out of time. Um, oh, okay, I thought I had uh, another few minutes, but okay. Yeah, um, the audience has asked uh, if you will post uh, a list of the tools that you've... Um, yeah, I'm hoping to turn it into a blog post when I get the time. Um, I was just about to show <laughs> for this example my notes for the talk, full of errors, um, which I will turn into a blog post at some point. Well, um, I, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that we had, and I really want to thank you for um, being patient with us as uh, as we worked on that with you, and um, thank you for sharing with us today. No worries. Um, the one thing I didn't really get to say because uh, I, wasn't, I was getting there was if you, that's me. If you want to find out more, especially if you want to watch the the live stream, the developer experience live stream, you can find details there, and that's my details on Twitter as well. And I'm always happy to answer questions. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks and sorry. No worries. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. -bye.